welcome to Facts and Two Cents. This is Petal. Hope you are having a great Sunday. Um, as you know, we are a channel that supports the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Harry, Megan, Archie, Baby Lily, Mama Doria, Pula Guy, the Chickens. All of us here at Sussex Squad, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am going to uh, put on a little bit of music in the background as usual. I like to do it a little bit of music. Yeah. Hope Again, I hope it's not distracting in any way but I actually like this so anyways what is happening in the world of our faves and what is happening in the world and of royals you know on a whole um quite a bit actually I'm sure many of you um have heard about what's going on and you've read the stories and chatted about it and all of that stuff and some of you may not and or maybe know a little bit or maybe don't know this part of it I don't know but we'll go through whatever news that's been around the last couple of days our faves are as we always love to think of them are under a tree as a, this was a tree I think was an Australian Australia. <laughs> they were literally on the trees. They were in like the forest or something. And I love this photo. There's another one of them with, with these really, really, really tall trees. Actually, I think Harvey took a picture of Megan, tiny little Megan in these tall trees. It was either in Australia or New Zealand, one of them. And, but um, we like to think of our faves as under a tree in Montecito, just, you know, chilling with, um, you know, just hanging out with some wine and some food and doing their work under a tree and uh, whatever wonderful work Archwell, either production or Archwell um, Foundation or Archwell Audio, whatever it is they're working on, we hope they're having a fantastic time doing it. And so, but other stuff had been happening, as you know, and I'm sure that, you know, Baron and uh, Duchess of Success and all the others may have talked about it already, and you may have known this story already, um, with, you know, the Telegraph leaking, or whomever leaked a letter, a private letter of Megan to the Telegraph. And it's so funny when you, <laughs> I, you know, when I read this article, someone posted it and, and you know, it's an archive, so we're able to read it. And it's, I forgot, I, I realized like I don't read a, a lot, of, you know, definitely not a whole lot of um, British, say, tabloid things. And I, for a minute there, forgot you know, um, how they're, you know, how they write and it's just it was really wild reading this again and seeing <laughs> you know you know this a source said this and the source suggested this and it is understood to be and it is just like <laughs> i was reading the whole article i was like okay do you really know anything at all <laughs> i mean what it pertains to, I mean, the letter is very long. I mean, the, the article is very long and rambling because it has the letter stuff, it has coronation stuff, it has, you know, Oprah's. I mean, it's just so many things in this letter that, it, I mean, in this article that it's just like, oh my gosh, will it end eventually, you know? And then so anything to do with the letter, it was just like, okay, is there anything that you know for sure at all in any sense of the word and you know and, and i realize that so many people they just sort of take exactly what is written in this article as gospel that that is exactly what it is and what you know and what the supposed letter says but i think for us in the squad we know better than that because whatever it is with the, with, the, with this letter supposed letter they would spin it and they would twist it and they would be you, you misinforming about this letter and what exactly it said. So unless you have seen, unless we have seen that letter and the actual wording of that letter, I would take nothing in this article as gospel, like zero to do with this letter as gospel. And, you know, and, and, I, and I'm assuming by now, all of us in the squad know how exactly the um, royal reporters write so that way we are not in any way, shape or form, uh, you know, <laughs> food by the nonsense that they do and the nonsense that they write and and as you can see with the on the left with all the yellow highlighted it is just like in every single paragraph of this supposed letter 
It's all safe. It is understood. It is believed to have, you know, um, it's said to suggest. Sources suggested. It is understood to feel. Is understood to feel. I mean, what is this nonsense? What is this utter nonsense? And so it's just like, <laughs> I had to laugh because I was just like, oh my goodness. And this is what is considered journalism in the UK. And it just, it's really, really funny. So before I even get to that, let me just remove my um, uh, little banner there. If you have not, if you're new here and you have not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and click the note, uh, subscribe and click the notification bell so that you uh, know when we drop a video. Um, please like this video and share. Um, help us to build our channel. And if you're able, join the Two Cents crew where you support the channel financially on a monthly basis. That would be greatly appreciated. So I'm going to go ahead and move our banner. We'll bring it back at the end. But it's... <laughs> Again, it is just, I had to laugh when I saw this, you know, exclusive. Megan wrote to the king over racism concerns. Revelations come after the Duchess of Success confirms she will not be, uh, she will not come to Britain for Charles's coronation. And so this is the, the, the le part of, I should say, part of the letter part of this incredibly long article that is just goes on forever. Anyway, it says, <laughs> again, whenever you read anything in the British press that says sources claim it is understood, it is believed to be, it is suggested, it means they don't have any factual information about that. They're not writing anything factual. And a lot of times there's a lie. And or it is just twisted to look, it, by the time you see the original article, it looks nothing from what the original says. So this is just a heads up for, just in case you didn't know this, for when you read any article in the British press, if any of these things are there that's highlighted, just know anything that comes after that is not absolutely factual information. 99.9% .9 of the times, it's either a lie, misinformed, disinformed. I mean, it is no, it doesn't bear any resemblance a lot of times to the truth. So just so you know. But anyways, this is what it says. A source cl claims that the letter makes clear the identity of the senior member of the family who made the comment. It is understood that both the king and the duchess acknowledge that the individual remark was made without, uh, was not made with malice. The duchess is believed to have thanked the king for his words. The duchess's letter is also, uh, also suggests, <laughs> it is also said to suggest, not that it's true, it, also, it is also said to suggest that she never intended to specifically accuse the individual involved of being racist, but was raising concerns about unconscious bias. One royal source suggested, <laughs> again suggested, that while the exchange was warm in tone, it had not eased the tension between the two sides. The Duchess is understood to feel, <laughs> like somehow they know how Meghan feels. The Duchess is understood to feel that concerns that uh, she has raised, which, crucial, uh, which crucially include the way in which bullying complaints against her were handled and the allegations that uh, neglect of a uh, that and allegations that neglect by the institution led her to feel suicidal have still be, not been resolved. So again, all the suggestions and stuff, you know, apparently Megan wrote a letter, apparently Megan wrote a letter and all of these things are apparently part of that letter. And the big issue why this is, you know, they're like, she's writing over racism concerns. That's the one thing with the British, when you accuse them or, you know, you point out their racism, they can't get over it because for them, Oh no, they can never possibly in any stretch of the imagination be racist. It's always unconscious bias, you know, and we've talked about, you know, racism and unconscious bias before, but, um, 
according to this, it's claiming that, um, you know, the individual that, you know, Megan has named the individual, whether, whether this is true or not, that's what they claim the letter says, um, that uh, she's, um, she's named the person and um, is um, she's believed to have thanked the king for his words because what they're saying is that Charles is the only one from the family who had contacted her via mail so uh, obviously there's a you know <laughs> they have receipts um, and so this letter is supposedly in response to Charles contacting her because he was concerned that she um, went ahead and made you know, her experience in the royal family public. And so that's why he was contacting her. And um, one of the things that it says is that um, it is, um, the Duchess's letter is suggest, uh, is said to suggest, not that she said it was, he said it suggests that she never intended to specifically accuse the individual of being racist, but was raising concerns about unconscious bias. And this is a thing that racist people love. They love to hear that word unconscious bias because they can get away with, well, I wasn't conscious of it. I wasn't conscious of doing it. So then I'm not really guilty. And never mind the person you're being racist towards, they have to suffer the brunt of the racism and the brunt of your hate. But no, we are gonna focus on it being unconscious bias and, and you know how my feelings about this i talked about when harry did it i was like no i had to completely disagree with him on that that is letting racist people off the hook and i know harry loves his family and i know he wants to give them a pass or give you know sort of lower the bar for them so that you know whatever his idea of pulling them out of the wherever they are but the thing about racist people is they don't mind being racist you know, they have no problems being that way. A lot of times people who are on the other end of that, receiving that, want to be gracious to them, but they have no qualms about doing whatever it is they're doing. We tend to assume they don't know the difference. They don't know what they're doing or they didn't mean to do it. But in my experience with racism, people know exactly what they're doing. They know the concept, they know the cause, they know what they gain from being racist. They know the supposed power and they know the effect of their words have on people. I'm not saying that there are situations that, you know, we all have done stuff that is like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that, whatever. But a lot of the, more times than not, these people know exactly what they're doing. And they say the words that they do, they say the things that they do, they use the words that they do, because they know the power of it and they know the effect it will have. And so, but anyway, they're claiming that Megan is suggesting that she was, she wasn't, you know, um, accusing the person of racist, but she was raising concern about unconscious bias. Could it be true? It could be true. It could not be true. Again, we don't know because it is suggest, it's said to suggest. <laughs> a part of why the Telegraph could be doing this as well is because they know they can't print the letter. So they're trying to paraphrase so that they don't get sued. And so whoever it is that leaked this letter, we'll get to that in a second. Um, whoever it is that leaked this letter, you know, Paragraph is smarting from Megan suing the Daily Mail for printing her letter to her father. And so they are using all these rigmaroles in this as well. You know, they're all the belief to be the suggested and paraphrasing. They're not using specifically what's in the letter um, because they're afraid too, they get sued. So again, you know, take all of this with a huge, actually drink a cup of salt as you're hearing this, <laughs> as you're hearing this. Um, and again, they usually twist things and completely lie about things because again, we don't have the benefit of seeing the original copy. Um, so, and as we know from the what the Daily Mail did with her father's letter, how they would take out complete sentences or paragraphs or complete words to make the, the, you know, the sentence look and sound very different from the original while claiming they had, you know, they were printing the whole letter, you know. So we have that experience as well to know this is how the, the British press work, you know. And another thing, I mean, if you were to go on the Telegraph's 
art, um, article right now that's on um, that's on their website, this is actually what you'll see. You'll see this is exactly how it's written, how you see it. Uh, that's on your left, you know. And it's funny, you know, they're um, also suggesting that, um, you know, that Megan, you know, it's funny to like, it is understood. Megan, the Duchess is understood to feel. And it's just like, okay, did Megan tell you that's how she felt, you know, about anything? I mean, I could understand it, feeling, you know, it, it's a quite valid that you could feel, you know, that this is, could be what she's feeling. But unless Megan tells you, you know, you're just guessing. So it's like they're understood to feel it's like, you don't know, somebody's feeling this is like four years ago, whatever. Um, I'm sorry, two years ago, whatever. You don't know, you know, if it's valid that she could be feeling, you know, I would feel this way, you know, that, um, you know, it said that she, she raised concern that, um, you know, the way in which they handled the bully bullying claims against her, as you remember, they went public and claimed that they were doing this major investigation and announced it to the world that she's a bully and all of that, you know, they're investing. I mean, I would never get over the royal family of all people investing. <laughs> <laughs> investigating someone about bullying. I mean, it just, <laughs> the utter ridiculousness of that was just like, I mean, at the time it was very serious, obviously, you know, before we could just like, look, you are the last people to be talking about bullying, the very last, you know? And then also, also, you know, the way in which they, um, they neglected her and um caused her to feel suicidal they did neglected and did not protect her and so that apparently has not been resolved i mean at least on the outside we don't know again we don't have the benefit of being on the inside of those conversations we don't know you know at least we never we didn't know about a letter that charles supposedly have written and sent to megan and we didn't know about this supposed letter that megan responded to charles to and as you um you know, if you look at the headline, you know, you would never know that this was, this supposed letter was a response to Charles because the way in which that headline said is just Megan out of, for no reason, picked up and wrote to Charles about racism concerns. And it doesn't say until you read the article that it was in response to Charles writing to her. This is a response letter. Again, the way how they misinform, you misinform. And so it's very, there's so many elements of this letter that is just like, and also the other thing is who leaked this letter? You know, and again, we'll get to that in a second. So that's what they, right now, what, if you go on the website, this is what you would see. Um, and, but if you look on the right hand side, when they first uploaded this document, this 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 supposed this article with the supposed letter, everything that is on the left is in is it was also in the original, but there was one part in the original that is not there if you go back and read it right now. And that is the part where you see deleted. Because right under where they said, you know, the Duchess is believed to have thanked the king for his words. The Duchess's letter is also said to suggest that she had never intended to specifically accuse the individual of being a racist, but was raising concerns about unconscious bias. However, it is understood, again, it is understood that she does still consider the comment to be racist. And for some reason or another, that comment where she does still consider the comment to be racist is no longer in the article. And it's like, well, you left everything else in there. Why did you take out this where, you know, the part where it said that she still considered, even though she was talking, you know, she was raising concerns about the person's unconscious bias, she still considers the comment to be racist, which, you know, you're concerned about somebody's skin color. Yes, it is racist, you know, whether you meant it or not. The comment is still, it is still that, you know, and that is no longer there. That is deleted. And so when all of this all broke out, you know, obviously we had some uh, reporters chiming in and it's so funny that all of them didn't, they usually chime in, but for some reason, these three, 
Richard Palmer, interesting piece of uh, by Victoria Ward, is the Duchess of Success, uh, Sussex again engaging in the sort of selective briefing she accused the palace of using to undermine tentative efforts to repair the damage between her husband and his family? Was it done with Harry's agreement? Valentine Lowe, yes, the Valentine Lowe, the one who leaked those, the palace used, you know, Kensington Palace, Prince William and Jason Knopf used to leak those fake bullying charges against Meghan. Yes, that Valentine Lowe. Fascinating story by Victoria Ward. The question is, why does the Duchess's camp, uh, why does the Sussex camp want to leak all this? Is it Meghan trying to prevent an outbreak of peace between Harry and his father? And intriguing, and intriguing that they should resort to the sort of briefing that they condemned in others. Emily Andrews also waited in, the unemployed one who just sort of goes around now um, to different outlets. Um, responding to, um, I, I guess it's a reporter, another reporter saying that, you know, she would, the, the, the reporter was theorizing that it was, um, Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace are fighting each other and, um, over, you know, one of them leaked it and they're fighting each other. Emily Andrews weighs in, no. And so she's like, you know, I think I got it or something. I think I got it now or something like that. The reporter says, and Emily Andrews chimes in, no, you haven't. This is a leak straight out of Team Sussex. And she was confident about that. And Stevie Schillinglaw, I think he's like a radio, uh, the DJ radio guy. I think he's on the radio or something. He, he chimed in, absolutely untrue. And, um... And then the, the other reporter, you know, tweeted back at Emily, like, well, how do you know for sure? And Emily has been quiet ever since. And so it's very interesting to me that these three were the, on the forefront of the other, pretty much the other reporters just stayed away. They did not say much about this at all, but they were convinced it was all Megan. And it's very interesting with Richard Palmer and Valentino Lowe's looking at how they, you know, if you look at, you know, and the reason why I have these two side by side, just in case you hadn't looked at it this way before, is looking at how similar their statements are. I mean, interesting piece by Victoria Ward fascinating story by Victoria Ward. The question is, is the Sussexes again, again engaging in, um, in something that they accused? Um, uh, oh, it, it, uh, is Megan basically, um, she, did she leak this to sort of get in the way of um, Harry and his father repairing their relationship? Look at the, they both mentioned the same thing, you know, uh, Richard Palmer, um, uh, saying Duchess of Sussex is the Sussex, Duchess of Sussex again engaging in the sort of selective briefing she accused the palace using to under to undermine the tentative efforts to repair damage between her husband and his family. Ooh, same thing Valentine Lowe brings up is this Megan trying to prevent an outbreak of peace between Harry and his father? Hmm. And they also um they also you know. Again, he talked about, um, you know, at the, the top of it talks about, you know, is Megan engaging in the same kind of briefing of the press that she uh, accused the palace of doing. Valentine Lowe mentions the same thing, the in, an intriguing that they should resort to the sort of briefing that they condemn in others. It's the same narrative, literally the same three points. They've hit the same three points. What are the chances that two reporters, actually four points, because the, you know, the first sentence is a fascinating story or interesting piece by Victoria Ward. It's the same, like they literally hit the same narrative. <laughs> What are the chances that they would have the literal same three briefing points in their tweets? And it just is so... <laughs> and then, of course, Emily chimed in, you know, she also had, um, she also had, um, you know, her own post about it, which I should have brought in, but I didn't. Um, but it was just very, very fascinating to see how um, these two reporters, and you know, it's kind of like, are you, do you really think people are stupid that they can't look at these two tweets and know you two have been briefed by the palace? One of them, 
You know, do you really think that we can't look at this and know that this was given, you got your ma your marching orders from the palace? I mean, it is so, <laughs> it is so evident and in your face, it's like you can't miss it. It is just like, even if you want to go away from it, it's just like there for you. You know, and it's just, it's, you know, they just like reworded it a little bit. So it sounds a little bit different, but anybody paying attention, anybody who was reading comprehension skills could see this is was brief to them. And they just took it and tried to make it sound a little bit. Different. I mean, it's just like, but when you hit all the talking points, almost similarly, you know that this is what you got from the palace. <laughs> it's just like... It's very obvious. <laughs> so all three of them were briefing, um, you know, um, tweeting and, you know, assuming that uh, Megan is the one that leaked it. Of course, you know, you see a letter like that. And if you read further down in, in, in the article, a lot of it is like, you know, palace source or palace inside or whatever. They are all the palace people. Yet for some strange reason, they both came up with, or all three of them came up, oh, no, 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 this is definitely Megan leaking this. And it's like, why exactly would Megan, who has Netflix, she can do Oprah, she has her podcast on Spotify, and a plethora of U.S. outlets, and even if she wanted to, she's not into tabloids, there's like a, tons of tabloids in the U.S. I mean, they're not on the level of, say, the you know Daily Mail, those tabloids who are national news in the U.K. We don't have that kind of, we don't have that kind of tabloids here because they're not national news. They are literally tabloids. There's a very wide line there that is not crossed where tabloids are tabloids and mainstream news are mainstream news. They don't usually cross. And so why would Megan have all these means of leaking a letter? I mean, gosh, she can literally just go on Twitter and create a, or, you know, create a fake account or she can literally open up an Instagram if she wants to do it. There are so many different ways. Why would she go to a two bit glorified tabloid to leak a, a personal letter, especially when she just, you know, sued the Daily Mail for, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just so stupid. <laughs> like it makes no sense. Whoever it is that briefed these two are really desperate for people to believe that Megan leaked it. And of course, everybody saw through it and called them all out. And so that just did not go anywhere. <laughs> it just literally did not go anywhere. And so <laughs> they were like being called out left. Though. Not just that, I don't think anybody, I mean, maybe there are a few crazy um you know derangers or something that would believe this nonsense but anybody with any kind of common sense and especially if you've read you know spare and if you've listened to harry's um interviews and you know if you've listened or watched the six-part episode that megan and harry talked about this is was just so could i mean it was just so like uh we can see right through you we know this is nonsense we know that this leak came from the palace, you know what I mean? And in an age where, I'm sorry, sources say just don't fly anymore. <laughs> it just doesn't. So, but it just, it was just, just the most, I mean, uh, like, this is nonsense. You know, trying to convince people that Megan leaked her own, I mean, hello, you know. And so, of course, um, you know, I actually didn't expect Megan to respond. I just, I don't know if, if it did. I thought maybe just the, her representative would respond. I don't know. I mean, I was just happy her not, you know, just being silent and not really engaging in anything. So I was really happy about that. And then, you know, you know, if she engaged, then that's fine. But I was just uh, really enjoying her just freezing them out. But yesterday, of course, the statement, as you know, the statement came out. The Duchess of Sus the Duchess of Sussex is going about her life in the present, not thinking about correspondence between, um, sorry, not thinking about correspondence from two years ago related to conversations from four years ago. Any suggestions otherwise is false and frankly ridiculous. 
we encourage the tabloid media and various royal correspondents to stop the exhausting circus that they alone are creating. And, you know, I, Megan, Megan is so elegant, or at least her, um, um, her PR person, um, her communications uh, person uh, for Archwell, they're so elegant in the way they say things. I mean, I would have just blasted them, <laughs> you know? And But they're just so elegant in the way they say things, you know? That's, Megan is going about her life and she is thinking about the press. She's not thinking about what y'all did to her, you know, from two years and four years ago. She is living in the present. You know, and so it's just the way how elegant, I mean, it's totally not the way I would have done it. I, I am so petty. <laughs> but she is so elegant in the way she communicates things. And, um, you know, through her, um, her spokesperson. And again, it's the same thing with, you know, if Megan has to release something, she speaks for herself. There are no sources that speak for them. And, you know, while I enjoy the fact that she, you know, uh, was silent and completely not even engaging in any of stuff, I love the fact also, too, that um, when she has something to say, she'll just say it. She's not going to rely on people. She's not going to, you know, outside of their designated spokesperson. That's who they use to convey things if they don't do it personally. And so... Um, so, you know, and also in the bottom where she's like, you know, look, <laughs> is any suggestion otherwise that, you know, that she has moved on is false and really ridiculous. We encourage the tabloid media and various royal correspondents to stop the exhausting circus that they alone are creating. And once again, you know, she referred to them as circus. I think the other time she was like, they were like clowns or something. And it's again, they are clowns. They are clowns creating a circus that they are the only ones that are a part of. They are part of creating a circus. And then they are running around like clowns, you know, running into each other, running around in circles with the, the constant stream of nonsense, either articles or nonsense uh, on, on television and radio and podcast. It is nonsense and they look stupid and they're clownish. And she is like, y'all are clowns. You created a circus and it's exhausting just, you know, um, just the amount of nonsense you come up with. You know, <laughs> and it's just like, and they don't see it. They, for them, you know, again, this is the, uh, that billion dollar, um, hating Megan is that billion dollar, um, it, it, this billion dollar industry. And they don't, they don't seem to care that they look like clowns. I mean, how many articles are you going to write about a person that is not going to a stupid coronation that nobody asked for? You know, how many people are going to, you know, how many articles are you going to write about the fact that she's home? Whether she is home because she just doesn't want to go or just because she's there. I mean, her son is, the, his birthday is the same day. How many articles are you planning to write out of that? You know, as we know, I mean, one day within 24 hours, the Express alone wrote 44 articles in 40, in, in 24 hours about the fact that Harry is going to this, um, the coronation and Meghan is staying home. I mean, it is ridiculous. They look stupid and it's clownish. And I don't know, no. And again, you, you have to think like, why would the royal family have these people represent them and be their spokespeople and their PR people? Because that's how they use the, the tabloid press. You know, and it's just, it's really, and I, and I'm glad that she, they use circus. I mean, I would have put clowns in there as well. It's like, I would have been like, stop the clownish behavior, the exhausting clownish behavior. You created a circus that you only, you know, you're creating, you're the only one creating the circus and you're dancing around like clowns with the stupidest headlines and stories. I mean, I would have just gone in on them with the clown bit. But, you know, the fact that she used them as a circus, again, this is the second time she's referring to them as, you know, as being, you know, creating a circus. And it's like, you know, they are real, real clowns. And so um, kudos to Megan for speaking up about herself. And I'm assuming now she's like, I've dealt with the clowns on Shutter Island. I'm back under my tree. <laughs> 
And I hope, you know, I mean, that's how I imagine them anyway. And I hope that that's how it is, that she's back to her peace, you know, <laughs> now that she has addressed it. But, you know, you know, they're going to come and try, I mean, they're going to try to, you know, spin as usual. They're going to try to spin things or try to come up with something, anything to attach her name to something because they know that they have, you know, brainwashed and groomed readers enough that if they say a stone, if they put a picture of a stone and put Megan on it, people are going to come and click, oh, is that Megan? She turned into a stone? You know what I mean? It's just the stupidity of all of it. Is it, And I'm so, you know, as Megan said, it's exhausting, you know? <laughs> Even if you like circus, there comes a point where it's like enough, just enough. You know, so hopefully our fave is back under a tree, sipping her wine, minding, and back to minding her business, you know. And so Valentin Lowe, one of the circus clowns, again, this is the same one who Kensington Palace, Prince William and Jason Off knew, used to leak those fake bullying charges against Meghan. He had to backtrack because, you know, remember he was one that was like, oh, it has to be Megan. She's trying to destroy the peace that Harry and his father are trying to create. He had to go and backtrack. Um, given the legal letters have been sent, given that legal letters have been sent by the Sussex's lawyers, as well as the palaces, since the story was published, it seems I was wrong in assuming that it came from the Sussex camp. Sorry to all about that, but even more intriguing. And you know, by that last sentence, it's like, oh, let's see what else we can find and let's see what else we can tweet so I can get more clicks. Um, but at least, you know, at least he has, you know, I don't know if they call it decency, you know, I don't know if they call it decency, but I don't think he had a choice because as he said, legal letters were sent by Harry and Meghan's lawyers and apparently the palace's lawyers apparently sent letters as well about this story so he had to backtrack so i'm assuming sir valentine low got a letter and so the others i haven't heard from i haven't heard emily andrews she has not said a word usually when emily andrews is called out and she's lied about something she's sent to go silent she never acknowledges her lies or very rarely acknowledges that she's a liar, which she's, I mean, hello. It's a reason we used to call her Malimali Andrews. That's all she did. And Richard, um, Richard, um, the royal, uh, royal reporter, <laughs> he, we've not heard from him. So he has not been online at least, you know, maybe I should have checked today. I hadn't checked his Twitter today. So maybe, I don't know, maybe he's taking a few days off. But Valentino Lowe had to come in and apologize for, um, you know, his lies about it being um, that letter coming from the Sussex camp. So, you know, so I guess a few of them got letters. And remember we were talking about, you know, that line that came out of... Um, of the article about um, Megan's, um, even though it says that he, um, she was bringing up about um, unconscious bias and the line that they took out, again, and we'll look at that, that line that they took out. Um, yeah, about the racist. However, it is understood that she still considered the comment racist. I have a feeling that's why um, the, the, the Telegraph was contacted by the palace for that very reason, because they don't want to. And, you know, if you want to know where this letter came from, um, you know, they don't want to have racists attached. Whoever um, sent that letter don't want racists attached to that. So whoever, um, I seriously doubt that Megan, um, you know, I don't, at least I don't know. Um, Valentin Lowe said letters were, uh, were sent out from um, the, the Sussexes. Um, it's, at least he knows about it. So I'm assuming it went to the Telegraph and also him and the reporters, who knows who all of who got the letter. But somehow um, I can guarantee you, um, the, he also said that the palace um, was in touch, I guess the palace, um, you know, may have spoken to the Telegraph. So hence we got that 
you know, that little comment there that, you know, she's still considered, or it is understood she's still considered the comment racist was taken out. And the thing about the, the Telegraph, when they delete stuff or edit stuff, they never, it's never reflected. If you can look up there where it says the date, Victoria Ward, who's a royal correspondent, a royal reporter that wrote this article, um, it, as you can see, the date and timestamp, 947, that says the same t thing um, when they changed the article. They edited it and all of those th things, it didn't reflect that um, that, that there was a change. It, nothing edited, they both articles say 947. And so it is like, it doesn't reflect that the article was edited. So if you don't go back and read both articles, you would never know. You know, and if you missed, I think it was an hour before they edited, if you missed reading it before and didn't know, you would never know that that they had edited out um, this bit out of there. And the only person who would benefit from this not being in there, the comment about Megan um, still considering the comment racist, the only people that would benefit from that being deleted is the royal family. They, they, they don't want to be connected to racism. They don't want to be connected to that. The only people benefit from that is them. So I would assume that's why we got that information that their lawyers or whomever or the palace contacted, um, I would assume, the telegraph. Um, so let's see what else we got here. And so, yeah, so we are still awaiting Richard Palmer's comment. Uh, we are still awaiting Richard Palmer and Emily Andrews. <laughs> Chances are we will not hear from them. Again, Emily Andrews never really, she never usually uh, admits. She just goes silent and hope everyone uh, forgets the fact that she lied. Um, and uh, we will see about Richard Palmer. Um, anyways, moving on. And, you know, thank you so much, Joseph, and whose name I forgot to put up here. She is the one that I got these two front pages. She is a, she's not a squatty, but she definitely supports the Sussexes. She is in the UK. And so I got these the two front covers from her uh, Twitter feed. And when um, it was there, she said that those are the only two um, print news outlets that had Little Louie on their front cover. So again, I am not in the UK. Um, I just went by what she said on her Twitter. Um, so, but apparently for the print press, print press, there's Express and the Sunday Times are the only um, the only outlets that had Louis on their cover, which means they had the exclusive. Uh, which again, I assume they had the exclusive on uh, Louis's picture. And it's very interesting to me if that, you know, if that is absolutely the case. Again, I, I'm not in the UK, so I don't know um, what others out there, um, you know, the printed um, news uh, papers. Um, but, uh, you know, again, according to Joseph N, these are the only two that had Louis on the picture. And it's very interesting that these are the two outlets that had Louis on the picture. Again, meaning that they got the exclusive to put it. Uh, put the, um, those pictures there normally you would see that you know running is maybe on the uh, daily mail printed front page as well but uh, no only apparently these two and it's very interesting the people that are you know that work for those <laughs> for those two outlets yes Richard Palmer and Valentin Law well shocker of shocks <laughs> Shock of shocks. You know, the, the very two that were claiming that it was Megan who leaked those uh, that letter. Those are the again the only two apparently that had that, you know, had the exclusive to put that on their front page were the two reporters that were claiming that it was Megan who leaked <laughs> leaked that letter. Hmm. That is very <laughs> it just makes you go, hmm. What are the chances that that is the case? What are the chances? Anyways, moving on. <laughs> I, you know, if I were to guess where that letter came from, oh, Kensington Palace. <laughs> or <laughs> just very funny to me. Very, very, very funny. But anyways, moving on. It looks like these two got rewarded, you know. Their paper got rewarded for them. Um throwing Megan again under the bus. That's what it appears. I could be wrong, but that's how it appears. 
Anyways, so you know, now that they've been called out as liars and 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 Megan sent his people um her, her lawyers after them. So they don't have that story to be running, you know, running anymore because again, Megan is already like she is addressed it and I guess people have moved on. So obviously, you know, what do we move on to? You know, if you are the express who you write 44 articles on a single I'm going to be at the coronation. My wife is staying home to and take care of the kids uh, and take care of Archie's birthday. What do, what do I do if I if I can't write about that? If I, you know, that's played out and, and 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 this letter thing is not going anywhere and we can't really blame Megan for the letter stuff. Well, what do we do? Oh, we're going. We're going to find someone who could tell us the cost of how you know how much it is to clean Frogmore Cottage now that Megan and Harry have left. That's right. This is the <laughs> Express front page. Harry and Meghan's former home front mall will cost 1134 to clean, expert claim. Prince Harry and Meghan were asked to, if, to I'm sorry, to vacate Frogmore Cottage earlier this year. An expert spoke to Express UK about how much it will cost to clean the property for the new owner. Meanwhile, Harry and Meghan hasn't lived at Frogmore for, <laughs> for since 2020, since 2019. And they've, Megan has been back, I think, twice. Harry's probably the three, four times, you know, for a few days and haven't lived there. And Eugenie and Jack and their family were living in that cottage, <laughs> you know? And so it was just as one of those things like, are you serious? So someone posted the archive and I was like, well, I, I mean, I just was just one of those moods where I'm like, okay, I need to read this because I really would love to hear what this so-called expert. And so this is a person, they literally got a person who has never been to Frogmore. They don't even know how many bath bedrooms that's there. They don't know, you know, they're quoting that, oh, Harry and Meghan got, has an orangery, which has already proven false, that they have a yoga studio, which has already been proven false, and all of these things. And if they did all of these things, and, oh, the carpeting. Oh, if they have, you know, they're carpeting, they, they're gonna have be, they have to be spot clean, the carpeting carpeting who puts carpeting in there <laughs> like carpeting gross <laughs> you know what i mean and and it's just like all of these things with a person who literally knows nothing and so they have pretty much wrote an article basically claiming that harry and megan were so dirty and which is what the article so they have to you know so they have to come in and clean up after the dirty Sussexes. And 1,134 pounds is what it would what it would cost that, I kid you not, the taxpayers to clean up after those dirty Sussexes. And I, I mean, I had to laugh because I mean, again, if you were the Express, this is where you would go. This is absolutely where you would go. <laughs> And again, this expert knows, never been there, no, doesn't even know how many rooms in this place, you know? And it was just very, very, again, circus clowns, circus clowns. And, and again, they have no self-awareness. So they just keep running around in circles like clowns. They keep running around and there was nobody there to say, stop. You're being an idiot. You're being a clown. You're being stupid right now. And you're making your country look stupid. And you're making your the supposed royal family that you're supposed to be PRing for. You're making them look stupid. Especially in the light. And you're talking about 1,134 pounds in the light of the king spending 100 million of taxpayer funds for a coronation nobody asked for. You're making him look stupid. <laughs> but again, no, there's no, there are no lights on here. There are no lights on in this place. So these clowns just keep running around and bumping into things. It's unbelievable to me. So anyway, moving on <laughs> to something a little more sane, but still dealing with tabloids. Another lawsuit, Prince Harry, actually not another lawsuit. This actually was filed in 2019. And so, but it's funny as I read it in light of, you know, Fox News having to pay Dominion over $787 million. When I read 200000 I was like, oh, Harry, 
you gotta go for more. It has to at least be a million, <laughs> two hundred thousand. You know, you got. But again, in the U.S., you get a lot more than in the U.K. They don't pay out a lot when it comes to the press. They really don't. You know, so that's why for me, when I think of you know with what people, um, the payouts that that rep- that news outlets give to people is really pittance compared to what you would get in the U.S. I mean, again, Dominion is getting seven hundred and seventy eighty-seven million dollars, and then um, there's another another organization that's suing Fox for even. I think they're suing for like two billion dollars. So again, when I read the two hundred thousand, I was like, Oh, Harry, you just shortchanged yourself. <laughs> but anyway, this is a this is one of the other um, lawsuits that he's doing. He says Prince Harry's media war continues with phone hacking claims against the son. Harry is seeking at least two hundred thousand in damages over alleged hacking, including while Rebecca, um, including while Rebecca Brooks. Um, was editor. Harry is seeking at least 200,000 in damages and alleges that the Sun newspaper illegally hacked his voicemail and hired private investigators to blab private information uh, about his relationships during, 2000s, during the 2000s, including when Brooks was editor. Harry claims in claim initially filed in 2019 set out at least 101, and that's a 101 separate alleged payments made by the Sun to private investigators for information on him and his relationship as relationships as well as stories he says were the result of his phone being hacked the preliminary court hearing is expected to see fresh testimony from harry about the impact of the stories on his on his family's life including references to his grandmother queen elizabeth ii the timing could be awkward for King Charles with the court hearing taking place just 10 days before his coronation. Harry has previously claimed there was a secret deal between the royal family and Murdoch Media Company not to bring legal cases against the British newspaper industry. And so again, there um, Carrie has his Daily Mail court case, the Mirror, and now the Sun. They're all sort of happening within this time frame. And so it'll be, you know, it is, and so we were talking the other day about Harry not playing uh, polo. And this is a lot. This is a whole lot. I mean, that's three court cases with all of these, um, you know, big news outlets in the UK. And that is a lot for one person to have on his plate, you know, aside from his, you know, taking care of, um, you know, Invictus games coming up. Um, He has, you know, his family. He has two young children he's taking care of, plus his other organizations that he's taking care of. So including Travelers and and Sente Bali and, um, you know, all of these organizations. So Harry is a straight full. So hence, I think uh, Polo is on the back burner. Uh, But I, you know, whatever it is he's doing, I hope he's taking time for himself to be able to make sure that his mental health is not affected and that he has rest and that he has some sense of fun in his life because this is a lot. This is a whole lot. So, but again, you know, Harry says, you know, this is a fight. This is his life work. This is his life's work. You know, he's doing this because... I'm sure Harry and Meghan's thinking is like, I don't want this to be what it is when my children become of age, when the press will go after them. They want to clean it up. And, and, you know, so this is his life work. And so he is doing a great job. So please pray for him and all of these court cases, you know, uh, it's just, (laughs) I feel overwhelmed and it's not my case, you know? (laughs) And so I can't imagine what it's like for him. And so huge prayers for Harry in this. And, you know, I hope he wins them. I mean, it'll bring such major changes, um, his fight. And again, I hope more and more people come out and help him. He cannot fight all of these people by himself, you know. And I know there are a lot of others um, who have sued, especially the son as well. So the more, the merrier. Um, So, yeah, moving on. Ah, yeah, so there is this. Um, thank you, RS Lock uh, or Royal underscore Suda, who posted this. Um, this is very interesting. Talk about the British press and how 
they are so, it's so hypocritical in their reporting it is i mean i don't understand how just about every single news outlet in this country is just hypocrisy and hypocrisy and is just lying and it just it's it's gross and it just it, there's so many I, I have no words because you know you don't it, if you not, don't grow up with this kind of thing you don't realize that you can have a news outlet that's supposedly a legit outlet and just lie and be completely just you know um just use complete double standard and hypocrisy and it just and it's not that one-off thing it's just that's what that's who you are and what you represent and still have a news outlet i mean you know you can say like okay in the u.s we have we have fox news but we see what fox news are they're going through things right now for this very reason for the lying and misinformation and all the stuff that they've been doing and blatant hypocrisy and so um uh this uh so royal suda posted this and it's um it's called tripping on i don't even know if that's the name of the news outlets, but she posts this clip and it's from a you know paper, a newspaper, and it says, um, when the Duke of Sussex admitted in his memoir to using psychedelic drugs and praised how they helped him redefine reality, no one was more outraged than the Daily Telegraph. Today, we're all about the Telegraph today. Prince Harry accused Prince Harry, and this is a quote from the Telegraph, Prince Harry accused of glorifying drugs with dangerous um, psychobabble. The paper stormed on, uh, stormed on January 6th, quoting anonymous government ministers claiming his comments grossly irresponsible claiming his comments grossly irresponsible in that they seek to justify and promote drug use. The Telegraph even consulted a number of immigration lawyers and following uh, the following day, presenting its findings under the skating headline, Prince Harry should have been denied U.S. residency over drug use revealed in the memoir. The paper was still in the case as recently as April 4. Because, you know, they were like, oh, yes, this group, um, you know, applied, um, I guess they did an FOI to the, the immigration department to get Harry's um, immigration application revealed because they claim it's in public interest so that the world would know if Harry lied on his immigration papers. And it's like, you can't do that. That's confidential information. Um, you know, so they had this big thing like, will Harry, be, you know, be... Um, uh, will Harry be ki be kicked out of the U.S. and all of that stuff? That you know, not just them. The Daily Mail. They were all going on about it. The paper was still on this case as recently as April fourth, when the, when it enthused that Harry may have may have to keep the U.S. authorities updated on his drug use if he is to retain visa rights to live in California. It emerged. So how did so how did it react a few days later? I mean, again, this is this is what they were doing April four. So how did the same paper to Telegraph? So how did it react a few days later when the former Scottish rugby international R uh, Rory Lamont revealed his own extensive use of psychedelic drugs? Er, uh, it gave him a. 1200 word first person article to tell readers that my rugby injuries made me suicidal but psychedelic drugs the same drugs that harry talked about using but psychedelic drugs saved me complete with plugs for his own retreat at which participants can join in ceremonies smearing toxic secretion from the South, Af uh, South American fog on their skin in order to facilitate their journey to a great spirit, spirit of combo. No dangerous psychobabble there. And so this is pointing out the, like, you know, again, the complete hypocrisy. When Harry talks about, you know, him using psychedelic drugs and how it helped him and it sort of cleared his windscreens and helped him to, you know, be able to see life in a different way or whatever, when he said that, 
It was, you know, how it was dangerous psycho babble. It was glorifying drugs and all of these things. And, you know, they contacted immigration. I mean, some of them contacted, literally contacted immigration and filed all like, what is it? A 15 page document for immigration to release um, Prince Harry's immigration uh, application. You know, all of this they did to try to get Harry kicked out of the U.S. But, you know, not even a, like as this, this paper was saying, you know, they were on this this path attacking Harry over this as late as April 4. And then a few days later in April, say this month, this guy, Rory Lamont, who is a rugby player, came out and said the literally the same thing including you know the drugs and uh, alcohol stuff he took before and how when he was you know when he was suicidal he took psychedelics and that is what has kept him alive and that is what has changed his life and literally almost word for word he said what harry said including he even referenced referenced harry in his article and they in nothing nobody attacked him nobody claimed what he was saying was psycho babble nobody claimed he was glorifying drugs in fact they even gave him a plug they i mean let's let's go move on let's go on and we'll see what um just to, to look at receipts from what this article is saying this is what happened when harry talked about it this is this is the same daily telegraph with harry you know, when Harry, you know, this, these are a couple of their articles. Harry accused of glorifying drugs with dangerous psychobabbles. Just, you know, confirming what that article was just saying. This is one of the, uh, so that was on January 6th. This is the headline, uh, on the headline on January 6th when, you know, before Spare was released, when obviously um, the British press got hold of the book, translated it from Spanish, and then was spreading all of this stuff about Harry and a lot of misinformation along with that as well. This is one of the things, January 6th. Harry accused of glorifying drugs with dangerous psychobabble. The Duke of Sussex is facing backlash after claiming in his book, Spare, that psychedelic drugs allowed him to see the truth. Prince Harry has been accused by ministers of glorifying drugs with dangerous psychobabble. The Duke of Sussex faced a backlash on Friday from MPs, um, a police chief and drugs campaigner whose son died after the uh, after the prince admitted in his whose son died after the prince admitted in his memoir that he had taken cocaine, cannabis, and magic mushrooms. The claimed psychedelic drugs allowed him and claimed psychedelic drugs allowed him to see the truth. With the government set to launch a fresh crackdown on recreational middle-class drug use, the minister said his comments were grossly irresponsible in that they seek to justify and promote drug use, are, are an embarrassment to himself and, and in part incoherent psychobabble. I hope and expect that people will simply ignore the nonsense he came up with. Another described it as a massively irresponsible. On the next day, another Telegraph article. Prince Harry should be denied U.S. residency over drug use revealed in memoir. Immigration lawyers claim, I'm sorry, immigration lawyer confirmed that the Duke would have been required to detail his drug history when he permanently relocated to California. The article says, immigration lawyers, the Telegraph spoke with, Again, the Telegraph contacted immigration lawyers over this. Immigration lawyers the Telegraph spoke with confirmed the Duke of Sussex would have been required to detail his history when he made the decision to permanently re relocate to California. The Duke moved to ultra-wealthy California enclave of Montecito with his wife Megan in early 20, 2020. He would have been asked about drug use. If he was truthful in his answer, he should have been denied said Professor Alberto Benitez, director of Washington University Immigration Clinic. And this is a U.S. Um, uh, professor that they contacted. You know, so not only did they contact the immigra um, uh, uh, immigration lawyers, I mean, it is amazing the thing that they were trying, they've been trying to do to get Harry deported because he talked about you know, uh, his former drug use and, and using psychedelics. I mean, this is the hysteria that was going on. And again, I'm not 
I am not here promoting or approving of drug use. I, I've never taken drugs in my life. I do not approve of any kind of drug. You know, so I'm not here approving of drug use in any kind. Some people said it helped them. I make no judgments on them if it has helped them in some way, you know, especially like with cannabis and stuff like that. It's it's illegal in some states in the U.S. It's illegal in some, some states are, uh, you know, it's legal. Like for example, in California where Harry is in New York, it's legal. They can do whatever they want. Uh, I am not here promoting drug use in, in any form, but I am talking about, is the hypocrisy when harry talks about his experience and his past drug use how it's reported on you know and we i mean this is not you know this is just two articles in the the telegraph i mean the daily mail the sun the express they went to town on this stuff you know there you know there is this group i think it's called heritage where one of the the guys who lead it actually writes for the telegraph you know, and they are the ones that presented this, I think, 15 page document to immigration to get Harry's um, immig um, his immigration application revealed because they claim that it's in public interest. Like, hello, you know, that's private stuff. They're not going to release stuff like that. Um, but they did. And it's just I mean, they were just going crazy over this, you know. Uh, because how what harry re revealed and and their whole thing is we're gonna do everything in our power to get him kicked out of the united states because again with this culture it's about punishment we can't control him we're going to do whatever we can wherever he is we're going to control his circumstances so that if he is kicked out he has to come back to the uk so that we can own him you know this is what this whole narrative is about so this is this is just two articles of this whole ridiculous thing about harry uh, revealing in spare about his drug use and compare that to this guy rory a few days later again that was you know january 6th and and, and according to the article that we looked at on you know april 4th they were still on that path of attacking harry April 4th, four days later, April 8th of this month, the same Telegraph wrote this article. Let's just, I'm just gonna move my um, our little brand there so that we can read it better. There we go, let me move that there, there we go. And um, the same Telegraph wrote this about this rugby player called Rory Lamont. It says, my rugby injuries made me suicidal. Psychedelic drugs saved me. The former Scottish Inter uh, international describes how a Costa Rican plant pulled him out of the dark, the dark period in his life. And these are just a couple of excerpts from his, uh, this very long article where he talks about, you know, his life in rugby and how, you know, it's just a culture where you are basically forced to just, you know, no matter what, if it's head injury, you know, like concussion, you know, foot, whatever it is, you suck it up. They, they feed you a bunch of over the counter drugs or prescription drugs, and you just have to carry on. And it comes a point where he um, broke his, I think he broke his foot or something like that, or he injured his foot. And it was just um, a career ending injury. And he couldn't get better. It is, was not healing. They, the, the teams that he was playing for, after all these years of just beating his body to a pulp for these teams, when they realized his injury wasn't healing, they canceled his contract and they canceled his insurance, his, his medical insurance. And so he had got to the place where he was suicidal. He couldn't walk, He, you know, based on the drugs that he was taking, um, you know, I guess to for, the, for pain or whatever. He, he couldn't eat. He, I mean, it was just like it messed up his digestive system. He couldn't eat. So he was literally on the verge. He was suicidal. And so he... I think he was watching, I guess, a show and came and, and found out about this drug. So he went to Costa Rica to um, to use it, He, you know. And so he said, lying on a mat around a fire in the middle of the Costa Rican jungle, I was too terrified to speak. I had just taken 
Iboga, a psychedelic plant medicine native to Central Africa, in a last desperate attempt to avoid taking my own life. In another part of the article, it says, this wasn't the first time I tried psychedelics. I tried psy uh, psilocybin, which is mas magic mushrooms. Harry mentioned that he had tried that um, seven years earlier after a bad concussion because I'd heard they benefited brain injuries. The harsh reality of rugby culture first struck me then how players are encouraged to keep going through pain and injuries well past the breaking point. That night, under the influence of a boga, I felt a sense of clarity that was almost disturbing. A new energy coursed through my body, and I could see all the trauma I had put in that I put that I put it through. The surgeries, the pharmaceuticals, the partying. And so I'm going to put a link to the show notes so you can, I mean, he describes so many other things and he talks about how taking it gave him a new, renewed sense of life, a new way of life, a new way of any, you know, thinking, a new reality. And he talks about, you know, this is not, it's not for everyone. And um, this kind of drug is not for everyone. And if you, if you're going to do it, you may you have to make sure you go to someone that's safe that can, you know, you have to do it with, with a place that's reputable and that's safe. Harry's mentioned the same thing. Harry talked about the same thing and he talks about it, how it clears out, you know, sort of clears that windshield and it gives you a whole new perspective on life and how it really helps. It literally, just, like, it's, it's almost going back and reading exactly what Harry talked about, you know? And so this is the same drug he talked about, you know, using, yeah, it wasn't the first time he was using it, he had used it before. You know, when uh, it wasn't the first time he used it, um, when he was suicidal, he had used it before when he had an ed um, a concussion. Same thing Harry talked about. You know, he talked about using um, magic mushroom. Same thing Harry talked about. You know, in his this article, um, Rory talked about you know all the alcohol and all of that stuff that he they were on. You know, when he was playing. Same thing Harry talked about. And what has been the response to from the Daily Telegraph when when Rory you know shared this on? I mean, this is Rory in a this is you know Ruby Devoy wrote you know is credited with publishing it, but this is a first person account of a literally just about almost the same thing Harry was talking about when talking about psychedelics. And so to the point where Rory now has teamed up with his wife, he had left, you know, his first wife when he was going through all this stuff, they unfortunately broke up and now he's with, you know, he has, a, I guess it's his new wife. They've opened up this um, retreat where they are doing alternative medicines, including psychedelics. You know, and so his whole life path has changed now and they, he has this retreat and all of that stuff. And at the bottom, you can see, as told by Ruby DeVoy, for information about Rory's retreat, <laughs> go to, <laughs> they put the link to Rory's retreat. That's how the Telegraph handled Rory, this you know famous Scottish rugby players talking about psychedelics. No histrionics, no attacks, no unnamed, um, you know, MPs claiming that Rory is, you know, glorifying drugs. No, you know, no, you know, saying that he is, well, you know, again, glorifying drug use and that he is a disgrace and that he is not a, he is not a, um, you know, a role model and all of the things that they claim Harry and the attacks on Harry. None of that. Instead, they literally are advertising Rory's retreat in the article. This is the same paper who four days ago were contacting immigration and trying to get Harry kicked out of the U.S. because of literally the same thing. Again, Rory even mentioned Harry in the article. And again, the link will be in the show notes. No histrionics, no outrage, nothing. If I didn't see this, uh, if um, Royal Suda didn't post this and I read that, 
I would have never known that Rory article existed and Fallas existed in the Telegraph when one of the people who have been trying to get Harry deported because of the, you know, talking about his drug, uh, drug use is, an, is a reporter for the Telegraph. And yet here is the same Telegraph allowing Rory Lamont to share in 1,200 words his own story about using the same kind of drugs and it's being glorified, it's been praised, it's being accepted, where they're even promoting Rory's retreat. And it's just like, are you serious? And so for me, it's just like, this whole thing with her, again, you know, we know this, it's about we have been given permission to attack these two people and it doesn't matter what they do it is not about the fact that you know it's not about their action it's just the fact that we've been given it we've given given permission to take them down and we every single thing they do it will be a negative and we will i mean they don't even care that they're being hypocritical they, i mean it's out there they, they don't even care and they have groomed their audience so much that they will just accept this and they would say nothing. No one would no one would be like, uh, excuse me, uh, but remember when you were attacking Harry for the very same thing? Well, how come you not how come you have given free reign to, to for Rory to tell his story and it's accepting where you're promoting Rory's retreat? Where is the outrage? Where, is, where are the MPs to tell him that he is, you know, what he's talking about is psychobabble? Where are the MPs to say that he is a disgrace, that he is, you know, he is a disgrace, that people are dying from drug, addic drug addiction and he is glorifying? Where are those MPs? And this is the, this is the pattern you see over and over and over. And you see, you know, they will get supposedly reputable people to come in and give these quotes and attacking Harry and Meghan, but the same people would not go and say say something about Rory Lamont, you know? And again, I'm not glorifying any of this stuff. I am not about drugs. I am very much against drugs, but I am also understanding that there are people that this stuff helps. So I make no judgments on people if this, you know, there was a time where for example, um, you know, weed was illegal. And all of a sudden, white people, and I'm going to say this, white people have figured out how to make money from weed. And all of a sudden, John Boehner being one of them, tons and tons of black people are in prison because of marijuana. Not because they even tried to sell the marijuana, just because they have possession with no intention to distribute. They are in sitting in prison, black and brown people, thousands upon thousands upon them. The majority of people in American prisons right now are in there because of possession of marijuana with no intent to sell it. And all of a sudden, white people figured out a way to make money off of it. And all of a sudden, it become illegal. And a lot of them are now working for marijuana companies making millions of dollars while black people are in jail sitting in jail because of simple marijuana possession all of a sudden now it's illegal and anybody could be using it and so right now i'm thinking it's like okay when they figured out a way to make money off of this stuff then all of a sudden it becomes legal so for me it's like i you know i again i am not into any of this stuff i'm just here for the i'm just here to talk about the hypocrisy in reporting and how reporters use their press pass to abuse. This is just abusive. This is not about, oh, Harry, you know, is taking drugs or whatever. This is just, I am using my press pass as a means to abuse. And I'm going to use this topic to abuse you because I cannot control you. Because I can't make money off of you. Because you had the audacity to walk out and had the audacity to call me to account. So I'm going to use whatever means to destroy you. Because clearly, 
They have no problems with psychedelics. Clearly, they have no problems with people using drugs. Clearly, because if you're going to be promoting Rory's retreat, this person who sit there and you allow him to sit there in the first person to tell you all this stuff and you are still promoting his retreat and you're completely fine. Clearly, you don't have a problem with this. So any kind of going after Harry, this is not the reason. It is not about him using psychedelics. It's about you wanting to control him and you can't. So you're using this as a means that you're using your press pass to abuse. And these reporters are abusive. They are hate for hire reporters. And I'm so glad to see hate for hire reporters tacked to every one of their names. Because that's what they are. They are hate for hire. And so it is just, I just, it sickens me to see this. And people just not calling them to account. You know, it's all, oh yeah, they will do it and then they move on. So I'm glad to see Harry not dropping his court cases that he's going after them and, you know, just pray for him. Pray for him that, you know, and again, with all of this stuff, this stuff is, you know, yes, it helps, but it also is too dangerous. So hopefully and prayerfully that, you know, they say it helps them that, you know, it's that they're able to use it in a safe way that, it, you know, continues to help them or they get to a place where they are helped and they don't need this stuff. You know, hopefully, the, you know, I, I mean, I don't know how any of this stuff works. But again, I'm not going to pass judgment if someone is suicidal and they take something that is helping them to stay alive and has helped them to change their life and is on a better path. I can't argue that. Whether I agree with that choice or not, it's not my life. We're all different. Our bodies are made up differently. So it's not my, you know, um, it's not my call on that, whether I agree with it or not. My thing is just praying that they get to a place of health and that they, you know, whether it's physical and also mental, that's me, no judgment on them whatsoever. I just can't with the hypocrisy and the abuse and the hate for higher behavior. I, that is for me where I, yeah, I draw the line on that. So anyway, moving on. Oh, <laughs> a little lighter note. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you may have heard of this as well. Um, Chris Ship blocked me, so I <laughs> I could never see anything. <laughs> so I was very happy when I met a posted this um, screenshot because I called him out. As you know, I called him out about a year or two ago and he blocked me. So I, I never see his tweets anymore. So anyway, so Chris uh, and I mean, everyone else I really posted um, um, this picture. I guess this was posted by... Um, the Cambridges, I guess, or maybe all the, I, I don't know. I haven't really checked their um, outlet. So I don't know how many of them posted the, the Royal um, social media sites. So I don't know how many of them posted this picture, but Chris Ship was the one that uh, he had the names of the people on. I don't, I, I'm telling you, other than George and um, it was Charlotte. Okay. Other than George and Charlotte. I don't know the names of the other people. And so I, you know, I was happy to see that. I was like, oh, that's, oh, wait, no, I know Lady Louise. Louise is the, the um, Ford Fiesta's daughter. And I guess that's her brother next to her. The rest of them, I don't really know their names and I, I don't know who is who. So <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, um, Chris Ship has them there. So you can look at them and see who they are. I, yeah, George and Charlotte were the only ones that I recognize. <laughs> And um, oh, and also little Louie in the in the uh, in the end there as well. So I mean, and I looked at them, I was like, oh well, that's cute. I mean, you know, they're with the they're um the with the Queen just before she passed. Uh, apparently, this was in Barrymore, just you know, shortly before she passed away. And so I mean, I saw it, and I was I didn't see anything wrong with it. I mean, I think it's just a cute picture as a photographer. It's really beautiful. It's balanced, and you know. You see the two little kids, George and the little girl on the other the other end with the sort, sort of the same color outfits. And so it's a very balanced picture and it just looks cute. I mean, you know, with all the white. And so the, the controversy came up is like, oh, with all the white children, you know, obviously Archie and, and Lily are not there. And But then there was another thing too. There was this, you know, obviously it's Twitter. So it's like, well, why you, you know, there are some articles like, oh, that um, the article snubbed the success. Sussex's kids and it's like 
the Sussex kids were in California. Harry and Meghan just happened to be in the UK just before the Queen died because they were doing engagements with, you know, One Young World and, and Invictus and, and stuff like that. And so um, there was no snubbing involved, you know what I mean? So it's just this nonsense, the, the, the normal nonsense that um, British clown uh, circus usually, you know, go spin around in circles. And so there was this whole drama about that and, you know, but then, yes, <laughs> you know, and I, I mean, I looked at it and I just, I mean, it's just a cute picture. I, I, you know, that's about as deep as I took it, you know? And so yesterday I saw this video came out and I mean, this and all, it kind of just blew up from, you know, not just this, but other people sort of zooming in on the picture a little bit and noticing some weird things. So my entry into this of, of understanding, because I was a little bit busy yesterday. And so my understanding of it kind of started with her, uh, Miss Angie the Strange. And Angie turned out she's a photographer. And so she zoomed in. She's one of those that zoomed in on the picture and found some little odd things about the picture. If you haven't heard this before, I'm sure uh, probably other podcasts may have uh, covered them. But she zoomed in and found some some just strange goings on. One of the things, uh, you know, as a photographer, it is very important is lighting. And so you can tell from looking at a photo where the light source is coming from. You know, so when you look at the photo, and so she zoomed in and was just like, wait a minute. <laughs> There is something very wrong with the light source of this photo. All of everyone else, you know, I'm just going to use this um, photo a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit easier to see. If you look on the side of George's face there on, on, on his your left and his right side, you can see where the light is hitting him. It's right there, right there on his, you know, his right, your left. The same thing with little one here. You can see the same light source over here. You know, you can see it bouncing off a little bit over here with this little one. She, I think she was the one that was kissing Megan when they were at the Jubilee and that window thing. She looks like the same little kid. You know, so you see the light source is kind of, it's on that side. You see a little bit here on Louise here, you know, a little bit on Charlotte. So you see the light source is under your, you know, your left, their right. The only problem with this is Louis. <laughs> Louis, for some reason, his light, his his light source is on the opposite side, <laughs> and then you realize, like, <laughs> and that's where the whole drama, the whole drama started, where you know that, and then that was again my introduction was that video is just like. And, you know, again, when I saw it, I, I didn't look. I mean, I just thought it was a cute picture. And that's about as deep as I thought of in the gut with it. I it did not occur to me to go looking in and zoom in. I was just like, oh, they're cute kids. Move on. But then when she pointed out and I looked, I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it is. His light source is not on the same side. His light source is completely the opposite side, as you can see in the, the other picture with the circle line. And then he's like, look at the whole side of his um, his uh, right, well, my right, his left. The lights, his light source is on the opposite side. And not only that, when you look down by his little cheeks there, I mean, Louis is a little cute little kid. He is a darling little kid, I have to say. He's actually the cutest of the three of them. He's just darling little rambunctious little one. And <laughs> with all the, you know, the energy. And then if you look where I have the little arrow there, you could tell if you've ever edited a photo, especially like if you have um, taken the background, because I do that all the time when I um, make like thumbnails, I sometimes I take the background out of a photo and just use the image of the person. But when you take the background out, sometimes when you take the background out, a little bit of the background is left. And so you have to go in with the little, um, you know, the little tool that it, and the editing software gives and you go in there and you sometimes I have to go in and make it as tiny as ever to to you know to go along this for example to go along the side of the chin there and and not the chin the cheeks there to erase and, and to sort of clean it up a little bit to get rid of any extra background that that's left when you use the two to get rid of the background 
So when you look at the uh, where the arrow is, you can see somebody tried to go in there and clean up. <laughs> but I think they did, you know, they left a little bit of the background and then in a little other part, they kind of went into Lu um, the little Louis cheeks a little bit there. <laughs> and the whole thing you realize, like Louis was not part of this photo session when they did it. <laughs> They photoshopped poor little Louie into this picture. <laughs> and it was just like, oh my gosh. It was just hilarious, you know. And so this became a huge thing on Twitter and people we were all laughing about it. And, you know, I mean, and I, you know, and if not. As, and I totally agree, Chris, Chris Boozy jumped into the whole frame of it. And I totally agree with Chris here. He's like, please stop criticizing this photo. It's a beautiful photo. Yes, they photoshopped it. And so what? And so what? It's, it isn't easy to get a perfect photo with 10 children. I totally agree. As a photographer, totally agree. And I taught little kids. It is almost impossible to get them to sit like that. You know, because they're squirmy and they're just like two minutes and they want to run away. You know, it appears they took multiple shots and then edited the photo to make it perfect. I would do the same. <laughs> To which I responded, that, you know, yes, I mean, I totally agree, but thank you for confirming that, yes, multiple shots were were taken to get this photo to look like that because other people pointed out different areas that they, they could tell for because some of them, you know, are editors um, in the squad. They could, they could, they've been able to figure out different places, even where the, um, on the, the uh, Queen Betty's uh, right hand or your left hand side but down by her blanket you can tell that there's a little bit of photoshopping done there to the try to <laughs> some of them unless you are you know really an expert at photoshopping you won't you won't see it but when you've done some editing you will figure out and if you're a photographer lighting especially light source is very important and so you can tell where the light source is coming from so <laughs> So what what happened? I think they they take they probably took a few photos and then layered it on and to sort of blend it all in to make it look like one photo. But I'm telling you, like Chris said, if you know, he's like, if it would be, I'd do the same. <laughs> I love it, but I love, I love Chris is like, just stop criticizing it. I would do the same thing. <laughs> it's impossible to get, you know, 10 kids to go sit there looking all perfect and the royal family needs to be perfect or at least look perfect. And <laughs> what, you know, and then they presented it as Kate's perfect photo. And it's just like, I guess they didn't expect there to be you know, professional editors or photographers who would notice um, the edits and notice that it's like, uh, this is a little photoshopped. <laughs> and it, you know, Louis Cheeks needed to be a, do a little more cleaning. <laughs> but, um, but the thing about it is, it's the, the desperate desire for perfection. It's like, you know, what would have been really fun if they released that we're trying to take a photo, a perfect photo, and nothing is working, and the kids are being rambunctious, and it, you know, save yourselves and do stuff like that. Don't try to get these perfect photos, and then, you know, again, they, this is a historical, this is, you know, supposed to be a historical me. Again, you're featuring the queen. So this photograph will be, become part of history. But what you're putting into history is fake. And I think that's the thing about it. That, you know, the majority of people, including myself, I don't care. I have no, I, didn't, I don't care about this. I just think it's a cute photo. That Again, that was for me the as deep as it gets. What is important is the lie that's presented. It is a lie. It's presented as Kate's photo and she you know the photographer and when you're involving the queen this is something that's going to be a historical document and but what you're presenting is a fake image of and a photoshop especially photoshopping little louis <laughs> into it <laughs> you know and it's just like and i, I look i get it 
Louis is a rambunctious kid. He probably was like, I am bored. I do not want to sit here and I'm not going to. And I could have just imagined him running about and running out of the room. I get it. <laughs> but don't present it then as this perfect thing when you photoshopped it because you're presenting a lie, you know, and then you're getting exposed on top of it. I mean, gosh, save yourself this and present what's true. <laughs> present the mess because then that is real. You know, but again, you know, the royal family wants to be perfect. You know, it's like people looking at this like, uh, you could never get a bunch of kids to sit there like that to take a photo ever. You know, and the poor, you know, the poor queen also probably is like, oh gosh, you know, we know the queen doesn't really like little kids. So this must be her face is like, can I just, can you just hurry up and get this over with? <laughs> I can go to bed, you know, so, but anyways, it just... Like, people, stop trying to be perfect. You're not. This is not perfect. You know, it's just, again, presenting a lie. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Back to Chris Boozy. Um, Spoutable is doing great. Um, if you ever want to come on social media, this is a great platform. So many um, news outlets are coming over now. A lot of celebrities were leaving Twitter because, again, they've all lost their le legacy blue check. So people are like, oh, my gosh, I've lost my le legacy blue check. What am I going to do? And it's just like, it's really not that deep. Just, you know, transfer and go with Spotable, which a lot of people, celebrities are doing. Like Elisa Milano just joined. Um, Bernice King, Dr. King's uh, daughter, has just joined. I mean, um, you know, Rachel Maddow blog is on it. I mean, a lot of news people are just coming over. And, and so, um, Spotable has been trending, you know, and again, 10,000 tweets about Spotable and Chris Boosie's like, we haven't spent a dime on marketing. We just listened to our users and gave them exactly what they wanted. And our growth and virality have been organic. And it really has. It's been just on Twitter talking about it. We've been talking about it. So many people have been coming over, you know, and just getting away from the nastiness of Twitter. And whenever there is anything, you know, there was a group that came on that tried to do some racist thing. He blocked all of them. He just is on it. And so it is really, really great. So, you know, hopefully it keeps growing and growing and we can also all just lose Twitter. <laughs> Um, so spoutable. Yes. And for all of you on here that are on there, um, yes, very, very excited. Um, uh, let's see what else is happening. Oh, um, today was the marathon, um, the London marathon and this group, the African parks Rangers, they were part of the marathon. So uh, we knew this because Archwell posted about it. As we can see, Archwell African parks Rangers run the London marathon, which was today. Um, and then, um, you know, this is from the African parks, uh, on April 23rd today, team African parks comprised of a team of Rangers from across the continent will run the London marathon awareness to raise awareness and support for conservation NGO and they did a just giving um, fundraiser and if you donated in there, they've raised so far 10,736 pounds. So if you were part of the, um, donating, thank you so much. I know they would be most grateful um, for your support. So they have raised 10,000 pounds kudos i mean that is amazing so yeah 156 people um were a part of helping them to raise funds and awareness for um african parks and conservation ngos so kudos to them hopefully hopefully they had a great time um next episode i may have uh, information about their experience today from running the race also invictus was a part of that as well um the london marathon um they posted this earlier before the race. Good luck to everyone taking part in today's London Marathon from the Invictus Games Foundation. We have sponsored 35 participants in the virtual marathon and 10 members of the Wounded, Injured and Sick Service personnel community to run the London 
to run in London today. And also it says at the top, to good luck to all members of the international community taking on the London Marathon and the virtual London Marathon on Sunday, the 23rd of April today. So hopefully all of them had a great time. I look forward to hearing some of their experiences. Um, also, um, uh, from Invictus Monday says, meet the members meet the members of the we are invictus community who are running the london marathon they have some incredible stories like jessica berry she is recovering from knee surgery and is running today to keep her recovery journey going strong and you can also donate to i guess she has a fundraiser which i will put a link to this in the show notes so if you're interested in donating and helping and supporting her that would be great as well. So kudos to everybody who ran. I know Dr. Shola also ran, I think, for prostate, um, you know, do, um, to bring awareness to prostate cancer. Um, so, um, so many people did. So, um, and she finished, <laughs> which is awesome. So kudos to Dr. Shola and all of the Invictus and also the African Parks team and also everyone else who ran. I mean, that must have been amazing. So kudos to all of them. I look forward to hearing their stories and also we'll share on the podcast as well. So anyway, that's it. Oh gosh, I've been talking a lot, an hour and 40 minutes. This was supposed to be a one hour podcast. Well, so much for that. Anyways, that's it. Thank you so much to our awesome moderators, uh, Lydia Churchnelli, Karen M. Cookies and Cream, who always um, are uh, take care of our chat and make it safe and wonderful. And just thank you, thank you, thank you for the incredible work that you do in making our space safe and fun. I'm gonna put back our banner so that um, if you are new here um, and you have not subscribed, please go ahead and uh, subscribe. It's right at the bottom of this video. Click the subscribe button and also click the notification bell so you know when we drop a video. And please like and share this video um, because we are trying to build our platform. So please help us. And also you can join the channel, join the Two Cents Group where you help to support us. Um, uh, where you help to support the channel um, uh, financially on a monthly basis. So I appreciate all of you who support us um, already. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And also thank you to our Two Cents crew um, who, again, support the channel monthly, who have already, um, you know, joined the channel. I appreciate every single one of you um, and for the support that you give the channel because we couldn't do what we were doing without you. So I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much to our Gold Star supporters who support the channel. You see them in the chat. Um, you uh, Either with a super sticker, super thanks, super chat, um, all of it, or straight up just a donation. Thank you all so much for everything that you do to support the channel. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Appreciate every, every single one of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, um, that's it. Um, until we start, we chat again, <laughs> maybe a short, a shorter chat the next time. <laughs> this is a little bit long. So anyway, I love you guys. Have a fantastic, fantastic day. And I will chat with you next time. Bye. Ooh.